for your convenience we have given a distinguishing chart here wherein we have covered all the four types of markets and have given the distinguishing features between them this will help us to understand the four markets in a better way before going to the distinguishing features let us first individually understand what these different market types stand for what is the meaning of perfect competition what is the meaning of monopolistic competition what does oligopoly mean what do you mean by monopoly so let's start with perfect competition perfect competition is a market wherein there are large number of buyers and sellers there are innumerable number of buyers and sellers at the same time these buyers and sellers have perfect knowledge about market conditions both the buyer and buyers and sellers perfectly know what are the market conditions what is the product in the market what is the price of the product in the market which seller is selling at which price what is the services he is offering what is the bargains that he is giving how many sellers are there how many buyers are there both the sellers and the buyers both have perfect knowledge about the market this is the second feature the third feature is there are no restrictions in the market no entry and exit barriers no reservations imposed as to only these many players can do this business like we have it in defense private players cannot produce defense materials like guns ammunition maybe tanks so in a perfect competition in a perfect competition you do not have any entry or exit barriers at the same time there are no government regulations there are no government restriction nor are there any taxes or transportation costs the cost of the product is the cost for manufacturing it cost like interest cost transportation cost taxes are all absent in a perfectly competitive market now this is precisely the reason why a perfectly competitive market is an imaginary concept is an imaginary market market of this kind do not actually exist it is just academic it, it is just in theory you cannot have a market wherein the government does not charge you taxes you cannot have a market wherein there are no transportation costs or interest costs involved finance costs involved you cannot have a market where there are innumerable number of buyers and innumerable number of sellers and both the buyers and the sellers have perfect knowledge about the market all these assumptions about perfect competition make it an academic concept so to give you examples i do not have any because this market does not exist in real next monopolistic competition now what is monopolistic competition monopolistic monopolistic competition is a market which is almost similar to perfect competition there is only one distinguishing factor in perfect competition homogeneous goods are sold homogeneous means identical similar goods goods which look alike goods which have same features goods which are same when compared with each other are sold but in monopolistic competition there is a slight differentiation in the goods other than this all the other factors remain the same now this slight differentiation in the product may be because of some additional feature attached to the product maybe some discounts attached maybe some schemes attached maybe some you know warranties or guarantees attached 
may be anything but the goods differ from each other they are not homogeneous so if in a monopolistic competition the goods become homogeneous it will become a perfect competition next we come to oligopoly now what is an oligopolistic market or what is an oligopoly oligopoly means few so this is a market where there are few sellers i told you this market type is based upon the competition between the sellers so in perfect competition you had many sellers monopolistic competition many sellers oligopoly few sellers so in this market you have only few sellers but what is the situation in terms of buyers you have many buyers large number of buyers so it's a market where you have few sellers and large number of buyers this is oligopoly now to give you examples for this i'll give you the example of the payment gateways you must have heard about visa you must have heard about master or mastercard as we say these are a couple of players in this market we do not have many players in the market so the sellers here are few same as the case with tire manufacturers you do not have tens and hundreds of tire manufacturers you have only a limited number of tire manufacturers a few sellers in the market so these are the examples of oligopoly again airplane manufacturers a name with you will be only be able to name a few of them basically a couple boeing and airbus so this is a market where there are a few sellers but a large number of buyers finally we come to monopoly mono means one so in this market there is only one seller he dictates the market he is the only seller in the market where there is there are large number of buyers so a market where there is only one seller but many buyers we call it a monopoly monopoly of that seller now in this market since the seller is the only seller he makes the price he dictates the terms he dictates the price he dictates the conditions so the market operates as per his wishes and whims so in short these were the features of the different types of markets now let us understand the distinguishing features between these markets the first is number of sellers in perfect competition there are many sellers large number of sellers same as the case with monopolistic competition but when we come to oligopoly we have few sellers monopoly only one seller so the number of sellers is going on decreasing in perfect competition and monopolistic competition you have many sellers in oligopoly you have few sellers and in monopoly only one seller next product differentiation as i told you in perfect competition homogeneous goods are sold so there is no product differentiation at all whereas in monopolistic competition there is a slight differentiation in the products as i told you there may change in terms of a feature or an additional service like warranty or guarantee an additional discount or a scheme which is operated with the product so in a slight way the product is different from the other product each product is different from the other product so to say there is 
product differentiation. In oligopoly, it is not a matter of distinguishing. In an oligopolistic market, products may be similar, products may be different. So this factor does not affect the oligopolistic market. So the product differentiation may be none or it may be substantial. So it ranges from none to substantial. And finally, you have monopoly. Monopoly, what happens is there is only one seller. So the product differentiation is extreme. Either he'll sell only one product or he'll sell products which are different from each other. So the differentiation is extreme. Next is price elasticity of demand. In perfect competition, the elasticity of demand is infinite. Now what does infinite elasticity of demand imply? We have already covered this in a chapter which is theory of demand and supply. In that chapter we studied that when the elasticity of demand is infinite, we call it perfectly elastic. And what do you mean by perfectly elastic? Perfectly elastic means no change in price brings about an infinite change in quantity demanded. Even when you do not change the price, the quantity demanded goes on changing. This is a feature of perfect competition. Because in perfect competition, there are large number of buyers and sellers. So price is determined by buyers and sellers, that is demand and supply. And once the price is determined, it remains fixed. You cannot change it. Thus, the price does not change. But the demand for the goods keeps on changing. Thus, the elasticity of demand becomes infinite or perfectly elastic as we can say. Price elasticity of demand in monopolistic competition is large. It is relatively elastic. A slight change in price brings about a larger change in quantity demanded. A more than proportionate change in quantity demanded because there is a slight product differentiation. So if you change the price, the quantity demanded will change in a higher proportion. Next, oligopoly. In this market, the price elasticity of demand is low because you are exposed only to a few sellers. Even if they change the price, it wouldn't affect them that much. I won't say it won't affect them. I would say it wouldn't affect them that much. They will be affected, but to a small extent. So we can say that the price elasticity of demand in an oligopolistic market is small. That means a bigger change in price will bring a less than proportionate change in demand. A bigger change in price will bring a smaller change in quantity demanded. Same is the case with monopoly because you only have a single seller. So whatever the price he sets, you'll have to buy it. So in, in case of a monopoly, you do not have much of a choice. You do not have much of a bargaining power. So even if the seller changes the price, you will still have to buy it because there is only one seller in the market. So again we can say the price elasticity of demand in the monopolistic market is very small, relatively inelastic. Now I cannot say that the price elasticity of demand in a monopoly is zero because you still have the choice. It does not mean you will still go and purchase the goods. It might so happen that if the monopolist raises the price, you may still go and purchase or you may choose to 
not purchase it. So out of 100, let's say 90 people still purchase it, but there will be 10 persons who will not purchase it. So the demand, so the demand remains elastic, but to a very small extent. Next, we have a degree of control over price. Do the sellers have degree of control over price in this market? Perfect competition? No, not at all. They do not have any control. In monopolistic, they have some control. Or the case in oligopoly, they have a higher degree of control when compared to monopolistic competition. And what is the case in monopoly? He is the sole seller. So he makes the price. He has a high degree of control over price. So just to give examples, perfect competition, you won't get any examples because it does not exist in practice. That's a theoretical concept. Monopolistic competition, you have many examples. Soaps, many manufacturers, toothpaste, toothbrush, many manufacturers, perfumes, deodorant sprays, many manufacturers and the products tend to be different from each other. So this is monopolistic competition. All these products form part of monopolistically competitive market. Next you have oligopoly, as I said, tire manufacturers or payment gateways or you know, uh, airplane manufacturers, arms and ammunition manufacturers, there are only a few of them, maybe a couple of them, five or seven of them, restricted to ten. Monopoly, especially in case of India, railways is the monopoly of government. Only government is allowed to operate railways. Even defense. Only government is allowed to operate the factories which produce the arms and ammunition used for defense. So it is the monopoly of the government. Otherwise, you won't see much many markets in India where there is monopoly because in India we have this act competitions act 2002 which bans the existence of any monopoly except for government only government can have monopolies that also only in those sectors which are very highly important from the national interest point of view 